Hey everybody and uh, welcome back. Um, I am super excited to talk about today's topic um, which is the top three reasons why you aren't writing right now. Now this is uh, super important because a lot of the times when we feel like we've hit a writing block it's actually because we haven't hit a block, but we've actually started to believe in these three myths about ourselves. Now, I'm bringing this up because a lot of my clients will say um, that they can't write for you know this reason or that reason or another reason. But when we get down to it, you know, and I identify you know these limiting beliefs that are restricting their writing time. Then it's like that light bulb moment actually goes off and they think, oh my gosh, yes, that is exactly what's going on. And as a book coach and also an editor, I'm here to support the writers who, you know, they have that story on their heart, but they're afraid. And it's totally normal to be afraid because the writing can be scary. It's not necessarily difficult. You know, we're not performing heart surgery, but you really are becoming vulnerable on the page. So in this video, I want to talk about the real reasons as to why you're not writing right now. And there's probably three beliefs or one of the three beliefs that you are believing. So belief number one is that you don't believe in your message. Now, this is so important because everybody does have a story to tell. And sometimes we have a very common writing belief out there that if misconstrued might make you believe that you don't have the right story. You don't have the right message, actually. You don't have enough experience or enough heart to really deliver a good message. And that's whether you're doing fiction or nonfiction, you know, because if you're doing nonfiction, you know, usually you want to do an empowering message. And it's really straightforward what kind of message you want to give. Or if you're doing fiction, you might have a story that is grand, maybe high fantasy, romance, and it's really supposed to bring hope to the reader. But you're believing that your story, your voice, your message actually um, isn't important enough. You don't believe that that message is correct, or maybe that that message is not going to be what, what really you need to say. And one of the writing uh, tropes or that suggestions that we have out there is to write what you know. And that's true, but you have to also frame it in um, the right way to help you to get back into writing. And what I mean by that is do write what you know, but you know more than you think you do. So yeah, okay, like if you have never um, written a dragon before, you know, okay, valid. But you know, you have perhaps a bit on a bicycle or a motorcycle, or maybe you've seen it on TV. So our experience is actually way more wide than we believe it is. Now, that's not to say like, oh, well, you know, I can make up something even if I, even if I don't have any experience. Now, what I mean to push you towards is to learn and research and grow. And when you've gone into that kind of research and gone into that mindset, then from there, pull from your life experience that closely relates to that scene or to that chapter that you're trying to write. So if you are in a chapter that is just devastating, it really is, um, you know, that dark moment, then go back into your life and really think about, you know, what dark moments have uh, occurred in your life and what were you feeling? What were you experiencing? And you can use that kind of memory to project you forward so that when you write your scenes, you kind of have a better idea. You know where you're pulling from so that you can know what to write onto the page. So what I mean to say, when you believe that you don't believe in your message, you know, you can draw from your experiences. You have much more experience than you think you do. So um, the limiting belief, let's call them li limiting beliefs. Belief number two is that you don't believe in your story. Now this is different from your message because your message is like the core. It's, it's how you want to empower people. It's how you want to really, you know, it lift up the reader. 
when you don't believe in your story, it's much more technical. You know, you think that your story is falling apart, or maybe you don't have the right climax, or perhaps it's not following the three act structure. Um, you know, you're kind of afraid, you're like, okay, well, I've written this book, but you know, is it actually a good story? Is it gonna make people fall asleep? And totally valid questions. Now, you know, as a book coach, um, or if you have a book coach, or if you have like a, a well read friend, you know, that person can help you to identify, you know, where those plot holes are coming out and also, you know, where your reader might lull and drag. Now, one of the top things that you can do is to help yourself to identify where those places are. And you have to be a reader first. Um, but a couple of tips that we can uh, throw at you right now is practice. Practice your writing. Now, a lot of people are like, well, practice writing. Like, what? You know, it's not really common to hear inside the writing world. But you can practice your writing. You can write short stories. Um, You can write drafts of your chapters. Um, You can just write maybe letters from your character's point of view. Do your writing. And your writing is going to help you practice your story. And also do verbal practice. Tell someone a joke. Um, Retell someone an old fairy tale that you used to listen to. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be exercising that story muscle, you know, so that you can know, you know, where is someone, you know, they're listening to you. Are they kind of dropping off? Are they looking somewhere else? Are they actually paying attention to you? And that's going to help you to understand where story um, needs to be picked up and where it can slow down and your pacing is going to get a lot better. In addition to that, look up frameworks. So if you know the three act structure or the hero's journey, there's a lot of different grids and diagrams out there that can help you out. So take your story, you know, reverse plot out what your story is doing and compare it to your favorite story structure. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna tell you where you're falling off on your story and what needs to be added. Or maybe you have your climax a little bit too soon. Um, you need even a darker moment than the darkest moment you have before you reach the resolution. So all of that, it's going to be compared to your favorite story grid or your story structure or the hero's journey. And then you can get a sense as to where your story might need some help. Um, in addition to this, and I love of this tip is to self edit. Now a lot of authors they will write their books and they'll give it to their editor which is excellent because editors have a keen eye for finding plot holes if you're doing developmental editing or just looking at the lines so they can do line editing for you and that's awesome. However, if you want to practice your story muscle, then try some self editing. Now there's some really great resources out there on self editing. I also have a video, um, a free video training on my top, top tips on self editing. And now I show this to all my clients, um, to students, um, to anybody who's like, you know, I need some help really and trying to prove essays, books, papers. This is what I show people. So that video training is on the link here and also on my Instagram and Facebook. So you can check that out. Um, so when you do self editing, it helps you to see where things are falling off and also to know what to look for next time. So when you do self editing, you can start to get into the habit of understanding where things are actually not working. And now at first, you might not know what's not working. However, you take that highlighter and you're like, okay, this whole section just doesn't grab my attention. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel super like at the tip of the adventure. We're rushing through, you know, and so if you can't uh, use your vocabulary right now, simply highlighting it, simply noting it is going to be practicing that self editing. And that's going to help you with your story structure. All right, now limiting belief number three is that you don't believe you're good enough. Now, this is like a deep one. And the reason that this is a deep one is because it really comes down to like core level, who you believe you are as a person. Um, but also, you know, when you try to create work, you feel like you're not good enough. Like you feel like, you know, your work doesn't deserve to be seen. Your work doesn't deserve to give you stars, you know, four to five stars, five out of five stars, positive reviews, ratings, income. And 
this is going to be a really hard self-limiting belief if you can't break through it because it's what it's going to do it's going to stop you every time now as somebody who has definitely stopped a ton of books restarted started again books you know i know that this is one of the hardest things to get through however i'm going to encourage you instead to look at your work separately you know when you show up to like your day job for example or a nine to five or you know you're just going to help somebody volunteer you know, you don't show up and say like, hey, like, I kind of don't think I'm going to work on my project today because I just don't feel like I'm good enough to work on my project. Your supervisor is going to be like, what? <laughs> I don't understand where you're coming from here. You know, get back to work. So that's the same concept that we want to apply. Your work, I mean, as much as it's like your baby, it, it has all your heart and soul in it. I mean, you just love it. And if anybody says anything bad about it, you just are going to cry. I totally know what you mean. Um, but you have to put the work a little bit separately. Now, pour your heart and soul into it when you're creating it. But when you're getting close to that roadblock or when you're getting close to feeling like you're about to stop, separate yourself. Remember that this book it's a project and like any project you have to finish your project on time even better if you finish it early you know you have to meet the deadline your supervisor is waiting for you you are your supervisor or if you have a traditional publisher um agent maybe a friend who really 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 wants to read your book you know that is your supervisor so stepping away from your work and actually telling yourself that your value as a person is separate from your writing you are valuable as a person whether you write that book or not whether you write a thousand books or not you are valuable so like separate that you know make that shift mentally so that you can tackle your project as an actual project because it is going to come down to confidence and saying hey i can write this right you know i can actually show up and put my fingers on the keyboard that i can do all right so that is pretty much you know the top three reasons why you might be stopping right now in your writing and also to give you insight as to how you can just start to break through that you know if you're not writing right now it's probably because of one of these three limiting beliefs so i'm here to tell you that yes you can write your book yes you should write your book actually because you have a story to tell whether that's fiction or non-fiction you know or if it's poetry or short stories you know you can put your work out there and people want to read your work you know you just have to find that reader all right, y'all. So don't forget that I have the free editing, self-editing tips, video training. Um, you can find that in the links. Um, but also if you have questions, you know, you're starting off 2021 and you're like, I really want to write a book, but I'm not sure where to begin. Um, in January only, I'm having 10 coaching spots available so you can plan out your year. Now, it's not like my coaching programs. My coaching programs, I walk you through. I am here to help you. I give you that path forward so you can finish your book. But this is like a one-time spot, 90 minutes, where we go over your book. We, you know, reverse engineer your plan so you can meet your deadline. You can move forward, especially if you're on a budget. If you have questions about that, I'm Masiel at blackheartedstudios.com. That's M-A-S-S-I-E-L at blackheartedstudios.com. Um, and don't forget to follow on Facebook, on Instagram. We have some great resources and the podcast, the How to Write a Book podcast. Um, so that's out there. We have over 100 episodes already. Um, so that is really cool. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. And we will see you next week.